Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today I'm going to show you how to make an Adobe Air application in Flex. Now, Air stands for Adobe Integrated Runtime. It's cross-platform, and with Flex, you get rapid application development, of course. Now, the great thing about Adobe Air, it allows you to step over that Flash Sandbox. And I put Flex Sandbox here. Let's change that, the Flash Sandbox. And I wish I had a dollar for every hour that I spent trying to get over the Flash Sandbox and Adobe Flex does it so simply in air. Now, it, the problem with that, however, stepping over that Sandbox is that it gives you read and write ability to your local file system. So it's extremely powerful and can be very damaging if someone writes a bad application, an evil application. So we want to avoid that and a way to do that is to have that signed digitally. So in order to get a, an Adobe Air application out there on the web commercially, you must have a digital certificate. Now you can self-sign, we're going to show you how to do that, or you can go purchase one from VeriSign or Thort, and that can be expensive. So let's self-sign in this application to save ourselves a few bucks. Now the big difference you're going to see as soon as you start building an Air application in Flex is the root element will be Windows will be windowed application as opposed to application. We're going to show you how to embed an HTML browser component in Flex. Wow, what do you mean by that? Well, all these years we've been wanting to put HTML into Flash. We can do it now with Air. So let's go and do it right now. So we're in Flex and we're going to create our first Air application. Let's right click here on the screen, go New and hit uh, Flex Project. And we'll just call this HTML window. And let's change to from web application to desktop application, which runs in Adobe Air. So click Next, and that's fine. Next, and we're cool here as well. So let's go ahead and hit Finish. And you can see immediately it kind of creates the same thing that we're familiar with in Flex. How you see this red icon as opposed to the black icon, and immediately you don't see the application tag. You see a windowed application tag. And we're going to put an HTML component, so actually we can bring up an HTML window in Flex. Let's do that right now. So you may be asking, how the heck can you get an HTML browser inside of Flex? Well, here's the long and short of it. The Adobe Integrated Runtime Engine includes an integrated web browser kernel that is based on the WebKit kernel, the same one that is part of the Safari web browser. Isn't that cool? And you can instantiate it as much as you want. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to come along here and start coding in Flex, and we're just going to add the web browser. So what we do is we go uh, less than sign, MX, and HT, there it is, HTML. There's my web browser. And what we're going to do is give it an ID name, just like we do in Flex, just like anything else. We'll call it My Browser. We'll give it a width of 100%. and a height of 100% and a location and for now we'll just use the uh, let me bring this over here so you can see it we'll just use the uh, NKU uh, home page http colon forward slash forward slash www.nku.edu and let's go ahead and close that tag and let's run our air application and see if we get a window and it runs just like flex and hoo -hoo, there you go you now have a uh, web browser running inside of flex isn't that super cool and wasn't that super easy now you're probably thinking I'm really smart I'm not let me show you how to get to the help menu just click on the Windows application hit F hit shift F2 and that will take you to the Adobe help and you can learn all about the windowed application function it is essentially a, an extension of the applications class and we're gonna go to the help page right here so I just want to show you how to get to that. I'm not going to do a whole lot here. We're going to go back and start programming, but I want to show you that little uh, Shift F2 uh, trick and uh, the fact that you need to go into this documentation and start reading about all the new wonderful things you can do with Adobe Air.
So now if you can only bring up one URL, that's kind of boring. So let's do some work here so we can bring up more than one URL. I'm going to go ahead and change my outlay to, uh, or my layout to vertical. So I can center everything on the screen. And let's put in an H box. And what I'm going to do is open this up a little bit. I'm going to paste some code in here just to save me some typing. I'm a slow typist. So I'll make a million mistakes during this uh, recording. So I'm going to paste in some code here. And let me show you what I've got. I've got a label, uh, which says my URL, and its font size is 18. I've got an input text, or a text input box, with an ID of my text. And I have a button that says, go there. When I click that, I execute a function. And what my function does is my browser, now remember, what was the name of the uh, HTML ID? The MX HTML ID is my browser. So I click on that function, my browser, dot location. So I'm going to change that location tag to a new location tag. Uh, and that will be my text dot text. So it's going to basically take the uh, information I enter into the text input box and it's going to transfer it to the location tag of my browser. Now isn't that super cool? Let's see if it works. So I'll run it just like I run any other Flex uh, application. And there we see the my URL label, the text input box, and the go there button. So let's type in uh, another URL. www.google.com and hit go there and we're on Google. Isn't that fantastic? I've just uh, created a web browser in Adobe Flex. Now there's a lot more you can do with this and we're going to do that. Let's continue. So what I'd like to do now is show you how to surf that uh, HTML or use like a back forward browser history. So let's come along here and uh, paste uh, some functions I've already written. And they're basically just two buttons. And we have one with a label forward and one with a label back. And we have a click handler here. And it's basically my browser, the name of uh, the HTML element, its ID, dot history forward for the forward button and dot history back on the back button. And what I'm going to do is generate two buttons that will keep track of my history as I navigate to different websites. Isn't that cool? And look, <laughs> this is like less than 20 lines of code. Isn't that extremely powerful? Let's run this function and see what happens. And now I have a go there button, a forward button, and a back button. Let's bring that up. So let's go to a new URL, http colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com and hit go there. And now if we hit the backward button, we go back to the previous uh, URL and hit the forward button, we go forward to the URL. Now there's obviously a lot more you can do with this. I'm just showing this to you to give you a sample of how powerful and how quickly you can develop uh, web applications in Air. Let's go ahead and uh, produce this Air application for the web. So let's now produce this error application for the web. Go to File, Export, Release, Build. And you're going to see you're going to export it as an HTML window.air file and go to Next. Let's create the certificate. And we're going to self-sign here so we save ourselves a little bit of money. Self-sign.cert. Um, you can put your organization or your unit. That's optional. You're going to go with a 1024.rsa. Create a password. That will be embedded in the uh, Air application. And let's browse to a place to place this. We'll put it in the SRC folder. And we'll just call it uh, My Air Test. OK. And save. Hit OK. And let's go on with this. And hit Next. And what you're doing right now, we'll go ahead and you're going to essentially include the following files, which are fine. And we'll talk about those more next time. And you've just created your first Adobe Air application. Isn't that cool? Let's go and put that on our desktop and run it. And see if indeed we do get a desktop application that is an Adobe Air application. I've actually copied and pasted that onto my desktop. We're going to click on that uh, Adobe Air application now. 
and you see immediately because it's unsigned, the publisher is unknown, and the system access is unrestricted. This is great for self-testing, but you try to put this on the web, and no one's going to download your application. You're going to want to go to VeriSign Authority and get yourself a digital certificate when you get serious about putting your applications up. Go ahead and install this. And I have the application to have a shortcut, and we'll show you how to change those icons in a future tutorial. Let's continue, and it's installing the application. It also has a badge with it, which determines if you have the Adobe Air runtime system on your uh, uh, it'll automatically look at the version, and if not, it'll automatically install it. And if the version's not correct, it'll give you the correct version. And there's our application right there with our forward and back buttons. And once again, you can just type in a new URL. And go there and go back or forward. So it works perfectly. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I tell you what. This is a new peanut when it comes to web desktop applications 